you've got questions, we may have some answers. <laughs> We do have answers. As a matter of fact, this is part two of our Q&A series. You guys ask a lot of questions. You sure are an inquisitive bunch. That is the truth. But we love all your comments and questions. Absolutely. But unfortunately, all by themselves, one by one, they're very difficult to get to everyone. So that's why we decided to do a frequently asked questions page on our website and throw as many questions as we can, the most popular popular ones, into a video that became two videos. Yeah, we didn't want to put out an hour-long video because, you know, if you're like me, you have the attention span of a net, <laughs> and after about 20 minutes, you zone out. So we, we, we broke it up into two parts. All right, so if you haven't seen part one, I will link that below. Before we head over to the previously recorded Q&A section, we have one topic we forgot to add, and that was the e-bikes. Yeah. That would be you. I thought you were going to say something. <laughs> All right. Yes, we still have the e-bikes. Yes, we love the e-bikes. We don't get to ride them. Well, I shouldn't say we haven't been able to ride them as much as we wanted. That's about it. The name. Oh, the name. <laughs> they might want to know which ones they are and what they cost. Okay. So they're electric e-bikes. Electric. L-E-C-T-R-I-C. E-bikes. And right now, they are probably the least expensive bikes on the market. They come in at about $8.99, I want to say, last time I looked. But a problem you will find is they're on back order a lot. All the time. Yeah, yeah. They, they are highly sought after. That's it for the e-bike, so cue the Q&A. What kind of medical insurance do you have? We have TRICARE Select, and that's through the military. And that's what we elected to take once I retired. We could have gone into the VA system. We chose not to because we're established here in San Antonio with our doctors, so we stayed with that. Yeah. And that's part of the reason why we come back here every six to seven months is to see our docs. Yeah, we prefer the surgeon that we've chosen. We know he does a great job, so we'll, we'll stick with this plan. Um, it's out of the military system. We get to choose our own docs, um, right. no private docs. No referrals most of the yeah. time. It's um, a little more expensive. It is. But we worth it. We actually use Walgreens for our prescriptions. It's what the military is contracted with. We could use a mail order, which would be cheaper for us, but getting <laughs> mail is a little complicated. So we opted to use Walgreens. And once the scripts are called into our local Walgreens here by our physicians, we can transfer them to any Walgreens across the country. That being said, not all prescriptions are transferable. Right, if right. you have um, certain pain medications, narcotics, there are quite a few classes of drugs that you cannot transfer from Walgreens to Walgreens. So make sure you check with your pharmacy or your physician if you're planning to hit the road. So hopefully we can get Phil off some of those meds and that won't be an issue anymore. Yeah. We need Fingers a little crossed. more keto. Hey, 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 get off the tubby. <laughs> And let's just throw this out there since we're talking medical. This thing on my neck, everyone asks me about. It is not cancer. Nor it is it an Adam's apple, <laughs> for those of you that say that it is. Um, although I do say that it is, too, so yeah. I can't really say much about that. But it is actually a benign nodule. I have probably 10 of them. This is the largest one. It's so big because it actually had a bleed in it right after we went full time, so it doubled in size. But they are benign. They've been followed for almost 20 years now. I'm good. <laughs> so tell everyone who comments, she's good, no problems. We appreciate the folks that do, you know, yeah. bring it to her attention. It's not weird. It's not too personal. I mean, if you saw that on anybody, yeah. we would we would hope that you would at least bring it to their attention. It, we do get that question probably the most. Yeah, that's our biggest question. Yeah. For our military folks, do you often stay at military campgrounds? Not all the time. No, it's not our first choice. COE is our first choice. Military yeah. campgrounds may be our second choice, but the problem is they're not everywhere. That's so right. they're kind of spaced out. So we can't necessarily find them everywhere we're going, but we do love to stay at them when we have the opportunity. Yeah, and we do have to pay for them. They're not free. They're uh -oh. a little cheaper. Yeah, they're probably the on par area. to, to yeah. some of the Corps of Engineer parks we stayed at as far as 20-ish dollars a night, maybe. Well, it depends on your location. We True. did pay $50 a night at Fort Belvoir, and there are some beach locations that are 100 bucks a night, but they're always a ton cheaper than the surrounding area. Yeah, Fort yeah. Belvoir was 50% to 60% cheaper than all the other campgrounds. So yeah. it is a great deal, but it's still location specific. And then membership perks for military.
military, yes, you can find discounts at campgrounds, but the campgrounds that give you the military discount, you can get the same discount by asking for escapees, Good Sam, FMCA. Um, yeah, so all of those, usually it's just a long line and usually get 5% five to 10% off with your discount. But if all you have is military, make sure you ask for that. The next perk would be the access pass. And that is the, the national park pass just for people with disabilities. Now, let me just say that you don't have to be military to qualify for this. No. This is for anyone with a lifelong disability, not a temporary disability. If you have a VA rating, even if it's 1%, you do qualify for this access pass. If you don't have a VA rating, but you have partial hearing loss, permanent hearing loss, you also qualify. Just get your doctor to write something on a script and you can take it in and also get this pass. Now with this pass, it gives you 50% off COE campgrounds. It gives you um, some access, free access into the national parks. Not day national, passes. Yeah, not yeah. national park camping, but day passes. And some states will also give you discounts with the access pass. So make sure you check it out, see if you qualify. And of course, I'll link everything below for this. How do you stay fit while on the road with no gym? What are you trying to say? <laughs> I'm not fit. Don't. Round we is are, a shape. We are. I didn't say how do you stay in shape. I said how do you stay fit. We yeah. definitely had the full time fifteen creep up on us. Maybe <laughs> then twenty. We, then we had the COVID ten <laughs> creep in. Then I had my surgical five. Well, plus plus a few plus Oreos. Or minus five or ten. Yeah. So it has been a struggle for us. We do have Planet membership or Planet, Planet Fitness. Fitness memberships, although they are currently on hold until Phil can get back in the gym. Phil prefers the gym of of all other workouts. We do have the um, adjustable weights, the dumbbells. We have bands now so yep. Phil can continue his recovery from his surgery. And we we can do videos online streaming, but um, to be honest, as far as the gym, we were off and on for a while this whole two years. We are now doing keto if you haven't heard. Um, and I am loving it. I'm down 23 pounds. I'm down 10. It's probably the, Phil started way after yeah. I did. So, so cut him a break. I know what you're thinking. She but. fattened me up before my surgery. She was feeding me <laughs> Oreos and ice cream and chips. I got him chips. a little comfort food. I felt yeah. bad. I had a lot of comfort food. So, so I figured I'd back fatten off. him up and then help him lose it later. <laughs> so the goal as we leave here is to do something every day. We also, pref we prefer to hike and bike. Right. Um, mountain bike and be active and have that kind of movement, but we're not always in a place where we can do that. So the goal when we leave here is to keep this going and to keep moving so we can get in better shape. Yeah. Sorry, we got, we're on the 14th hole here and yeah. there's a group of four that just showed up. So you might here. hear them. Hang on, let me, I'll take a picture and then I'll overlay it. Okay. So they're watching us. Now you can watch them. Next up, Battleborn batteries upgrade. We get a lot of questions about these little beauties right here, our Battleborn batteries. Was it worth the cost? Yes, it was for us. For what we want to do, the boondocking, the, having the power at, you know, just hitting a switch like if you were at home, these 600 amp hour batteries are exactly what we wanted. Per cost, over the lifetime, the, the amp hours, the life cycles that you get out of these compared to lead acid and AGM, they're about the same for the duration of those batteries. How do you keep your nursing license up to date? As you guys know, I am a nurse practitioner and that has been a complicated one for me. I did research um, last September and I have five years to do a thousand hours of direct patient care to keep my license up along with a bunch of CEUs and continuing education kind of stuff. When we came back here I was going to do some of my hours as like an in-home health and physical I was going to do that but COVID hit and um, of course all those positions are on hold they're not sending anyone to any homes because of that especially since it was the elderly population. So as of now, I haven't started CEUs for my next recertification, so I'm about to hit my first year, so that takes me down to four years to do a thousand hours. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do yet. My two options are temp jobs um, when we come back to Texas because my license is only in Texas, or do some free hours at some of my doc friends just to get the hours checked off. So I'm not really sure how I'm gonna handle it yet. Um, I kind of walked away from that when we when we hit the road. We both wanted to kind of not work, spend time together. And now that I'm doing the channel, I really can't work full time and do the channel at the same right. time. So 
I, I don't know. So anybody got any ideas, hit me up. All right, guys, if you saw a big jump there, it's because we had a camera emergency. We thought the camera died. Yeah, we were getting an error on there on the back of the camera. I hadn't seen that before. All right, so, but we're good, so we're going to keep going. Next question is, what are the three things you dislike the most about your RV? And I think we agree on this. It is the lack of counter space. It is the lack of basement storage space and our little bathroom. Yeah, in no particular order. <laughs> um, and, you know, just if we had more storage space down below, we'd have more crap. So, you know, it's kind of give and take. But the one thing that we would improve tomorrow, if we could, would be the kitchen counter space. Yeah, we do use that daily. So that would really change our the way we live. Yeah. So, but is what it is. You have to compromise when you get your RV. Just like when you buy a house, you never get everything you want. So next up is our uh, Onan generator. We have an onboard generator. Yep. So maintenance work is? Done by me. That's right. For the most part. I do the oil, the filter, and the oil filter and air filter, I should say. Um, and I'm coming up on the fuel filter, which I may need to take and get somebody to do that myself. Uh, I don't think I can. But uh, I try to save some money where I can. It's, it doesn't take that long. And it, for our generator, we have an 8,000 watt Onan, and it's uh, the oils do every 150 hours. So yeah. I keep tabs on that with my maintenance spreadsheet and with my odometer reading when it's running. So it's just something that it's easy to take care of. And we have a Freightliner chassis, so if we want work done on our generator, we can either go there or we can take it to Cummins, and they can do it too. So right. the next one, I read this one was like. <gasps> Somebody wants to know how far you can put nails or screws into the wall before you have to worry. And my answer is zero. Yeah, never, no. None, nit, I, I'm Nine. not that big of a risk taker. Um, we do not drill into our walls, Nail floors, no. nails. Not, not even a thumbtack goes into <laughs> the floors, walls, anything. We use command strips. Yep. We use um, VHB. VHB tape, which yep. is very high bonding tape sometimes. We use um velcro industrial that strength three velcro. End tape is is yeah. some good stuff and so is the velcro we found yeah. so it's commercial grade velcro and i'm telling you there will be no holes in our walls no. um what do you use for water filtration um we use the clear 2o water filters i use one out at the uh, water spigot at whatever park we're at and i also use the whole house filters through clear 2o as well um, and they, they're a little bit more in the cost department, but they do a lot more for you. All right, speaking of water, how do you sanitize our um, tank? Bleach, we use a, a bleach water solution. Um, and for our, uh, the one that we used was a quarter cup of bleach for every 15 gallons. We have a 90 gallon fresh tank, so you can do the quick math. We mixed it into a one gallon jug first, and then we poured it into the fresh tank, filled the fresh tank up, ran it through all the lines, filled it with fresh water again, ran everything through the lines and flushed it. Now, if you're using your tanks regularly with city water, most city water has something in it to prevent any kind of bacteria from growing. So you don't really have to worry about it, but we've been sitting and our tank hasn't been touched for a while. So we wanted to make sure when next time we hit the road, it is ready to go. Yeah. All right, so let's move on to electric. Yes, we do have a surge protector and yes, it works. And it has saved our tail. Yes. The reason we have the outside plug into the pedestal surge protector is I want to know prior to plugging Ruby in whether the power is good. They do make them where you can have the onboard surge protector. And we have one. Our well, rig has one. Yeah, it has a protection in yes. it. But I want to know before I plug in if the pedestal's good. I don't want it to fry my cord to get to <laughs> my, my onboard before I realize that I have a bad yeah. pedestal. So I plug in our EMS, our Progressive Industries EMS surge protector. I plug it in by itself. I let it run its test, give me a diagnostic, and I look for an E0 code. E0 means I've got good power. Then we'll go ahead and put the jacks down, level, and put slides out, then I plug Ruby in. This is your PSA. Turn the breakers off before you plug in and before you unplug please. It helps with that arcing yep. and sparking when you pull out. Trust me on this, okay? Turn it off before you plug it in and turn it off before you unplug. Thanks. <laughs> Is the washer and dryer on board worth it? Absolutely. <laughs> we yes. love it. I hate the laundromat. That's the only thing I don't like about boondocking is having to go to a laundromat. Our washer and dryer, I love it. 
now we have figured out a way to make me love it because at first i didn't love it so much <laughs> she was ready to pitch it in the beginning <laughs> what we figured out is if i run an extra spin cycle for about 16 minutes that's our setting at 1200 rpms which is our highest rpm it cuts our dry time in half so now we our wash time is a little longer, but in the long run, it's much faster, much easier, and it's more electricity to run the uh, dryer than the washer anyway. Second pro tip. <laughs> Let's talk about ways to keep your RV cool in triple digits. We've been in the Texas heat now. Head north. <laughs> I wish we yeah. could head north. Yeah. But it's been triple digits here for almost a month, and we found a couple of tricks by accident, actually, that really works well for us. So first of all, let's talk maintenance you have to keep up on your maintenance for your acs number one so they work as efficiently and as effectively as possible right do you want to take that so we change out our filters um, once a month maybe more depending on the environment you know with the saharan dust that came through yes. we change them out a little bit more frequently but make sure they're clean that'll you know keep them um, breathing better and then make sure you get up there on the roof and check your evaporator coils make sure they're not bent make sure they're not clogged you can there's sprays that you can get a, get to keep them clean and then go in and temp the air that's coming yeah. out of your ac so you know that you're getting cool cold air coming out um, but one of the things that we found that helped us keep her cool was basically live in a cocoon yes the cave early in the day i mean keep it completely dark in there I mean, even our vents we cover those with the solar pillows i guess mm -hmm. they're called mm -hmm. stacy's little hack is to drop the bedroom ac down about two degrees lower than yes. the front and that really helps keep it cool and for us that's because the back is always cooler than the front because there's less windows back there that big front window is you know where all the heat comes from so keeping it down a little bit lower actually has it turn on instead of just shutting off at, at normally 75 is what we have it on and then our next thing that we discovered recently <laughs> By is accident. we put a small fan on the floor um to dry something we're not going to tell you what was drying i was wondering how you were going to start <laughs> i don't know that, that was hard yeah. um so, and it ended up yanking that air from the bath bedroom and throwing it out front and the front cooled off in no time. So it's a little cheap old floor or it's table fan, fan. Yeah, yeah, from Walmart. And let me tell you, that will not be pitched when we leave here. We yeah, will cool. be keeping that bad boy to help keep the temperature down. For those of you who caught my hint, I might have been referring to cabinets, but to find answers about our cabinets, if we painted them, if we hate them, if we're burning them, what we're doing with them, you'll have to stay tuned for our next video. Yeah, because you would need a fan if we burned them, right? They would need to, <laughs> to blow the smoke, smoke out. Yeah, yeah, we would need to get rid of the smoke. Yeah. All right, next up, what do you do for income? We crush, I have a sugar daddy. We crush a lot of cans <laughs> at the park. You didn't even blink at that. <laughs> sugar daddy. Dang it, see, he doesn't even buy it anymore. No. No, Phil is actually retired military, so we mainly live off his retired income. When we first hit the road, Phil was a full-time contractor. Um, he worked remotely from home, so he was working from the rig. I was still teaching nursing school, but both of those dried up for us. Um, so mainly it's Phil's retirement, but now we are getting a little kickback from YouTube and our affiliate links. So right. that is helping us out too. So we thank you for subscribing to the channel commenting and helping us grow yeah. the channel as it has today anybody who clicks the links you know it's only pennies but all those pennies add up and they make a big difference i mean they've helped us buy new camera equipment they've helped us do all kind of things like that to keep the channel going so thanks a lot for using our links Seventy-one thousand thanks at that <laughs> not dollars that would be yeah. subscribers, subscribers. <laughs> the dollars would be fine but that's not what it is yeah all right what are your rving must-haves well, the two must-haves that I had before we even had Ruby was my EMS surge protector and my TPMS, which is my tire pressure monitoring system. I knew I needed those, I knew I wanted them, and I knew I didn't want to hit the road without them. Now, if you have an old school tire pressure gauge, that is fine too, but the important thing is to be safe. You have to check those tires 
every time you hit the road and you should be stopping to check them in an hour or two once they warm up. So if you're going old school gauge, you have to stop to check those tires or with the TPMS, you can just keep an eye on the how hot they are as you're driving down the road. But those are the two things along with a very good potable water hose yep. and a very good black hose. Sewer hose. Yep. Sewer hose. Other than that, you know, don't go blowing all your money because you saw a YouTuber with a cool gadget. Remember, not everyone RVs the same. The gadget might come from someone who's boondocking all the time and you may end up hating boondocking. Right. So don't go spend a lot of money on all these cool RVing gadgets you see us playing with because you, you might not ever use it and then you might waste your money just like we did. Yeah, we fell prey <laughs> to that when we first started out because we watched a ton of YouTubers and we thought, Wow, I need that. They're using it. We must need it. So we bought it and we, we purged some stuff. got rid of it yep. after it's it sat for a while. So, uh, I mean, start out with the, the basics, basics. Yes. what you know you're going to need. And for us, safety is a, is a big thing. Uh, I want to be able to monitor the tires on both Ruby and the Jeep as we're going down the road. Yeah. So what are the things that you thought when you hit the road you would use all the time, but you ended up hardly using it all? My homemade... Denver Bronco cornhole boards. Yeah, they're in storage now. <laughs> we <laughs> we loved, lugged them around. We had them on board for about a year, <laughs> pulled them out maybe twice. We used them in Arizona and that was about it when we yeah. were out there um, last, that were our first winter. Yeah. yeah, and they just took up a lot of space. Yeah, They were heavy, they took up a lot of space. So they've been sitting in storage now for, shoot, almost a year. Yeah, they may end up going to our son, but we just don't want to transport them to him, so we don't know if and when he'll get them. <laughs> no, no. All right, the next thing is we had a portable awning that we'd had since my son was in baseball. We used yeah. to sit under it. We brought that with us, and we had that for like a year and a half on board and never once never took it out. It out. Not we, once. we pulled it out to clean the storage <laughs> To, re, to reorganize. Put it, put it right back in, never opened it. We also purchased a gas buddy that we used while in Arizona for a couple weeks and then we never used it again <laughs> and that's also been in storage. Yeah. Let's talk RV GPS and I'm since I am the navigator, this is I'll take Arena. this one. So we have used a ton of RV, RV GPS's, say that fast. And I have to tell you, every one of them has led us astray in one way or another. Most of it's not like major stuff, but there have been some pretty sharp turns and some just uncomfortable hills that we've been on. So my point is there are no perfect GPS equipment. And we've even had truckers tell us over and over and over their GPS has failed them as well. So my tip for you is no matter what GPS you get, have a backup trucker Atlas. The, um, the road atlas, just in case you need it for emergency's sake. But what we use is, we use the N-Dash. Kenwood um, GPS, yep. GPS. We only use that so Phil gets an overall picture of where we're going. It's actually the worst to update, so we just don't update it anymore. So he may not always have the exact directions that we're gonna be taking. So the next one we have used several times is Copilot, and we used that mainly when we were caravanning with Life Beyond the Burbs, Alan Angie, and that worked great for us. That is an app that you can purchase. Um, the next one we've used is RV Life. That is also an app you can purchase, and they also do turn-by-turn -turn directions now. It's on the phone. If you have your, um, if you have RV Trip Wizard, you can actually download your trip that you've created in there to the phone to RV Life, or you can just punch in your address and do it, you know, like any other GPS would do. Finally, our main one that we use is our Garmin 770. The new one is the 870, 870 or I is it so. 780? I think it's a 780 okay. is the new version of that. You can still get the 770. You can update it. It works just fine. It's about 120 bucks less than the newer version. The Garmin RV GPS is really the one we use the most. That's what is, again. I know. What's your opinion on winging it? I love it. <laughs> Now. We wing it all the time. Now, now we do. Yeah. The first three months, I had everything scheduled, everything planned out to the day, to the Walmart stop, everything. And, you know, it took out all the spontaneity. And we wanted to make changes and adjustments. And we did. And every time we did, it cost us money. So now that's we don't do it that way anymore. So now I pick a waypoint, either a rally or an event or a family member that we're going to. And it could be three months out. It could be six months out. And then from now until the next six months, we just meander, decide where we're going, sometimes the, the day before, the week before, and that's how we do it. Yeah, it works pretty good. 
Yeah, and we've never had a problem finding a campground, finding an overnight stop, finding somewhere to land. Now we don't always get my first choice, but we've never had an issue and we've never had to be more than say 30 minutes out from anywhere we've been. How do you book a remote location when you can't scout it out with your vehicle first? Well, we just do it. Yeah. So the only place we've actually had to do this in is when we boondocked in Florida on some free land. It's a water management land and we couldn't go out ahead of time to scout it out. We pulled up, they were a little precarious with the low branches, but we got in it, it was just fine. And you know, worst come to worst, we call them up and say, we don't fit, we go do something else. Yeah. So next is how to use RV Trip Wizard. I get this question a lot. I have a video that will walk you through it step by step. Someone else asked, what's my process for planning a route? I also have a video for that and it is step by step. So of course I'll link that down below. It would be much too long for me to tell you how I do it here on this video. Um, but I'll link that down below. We're gonna move it over to Phil and talk about our hitch and our bike rack. We get a lot of questions about our hitch setup and our bike rack that we have on the end of Ruby. So what I have here is a 10 inch drop rigid dual hitch receiver. So it allows me to put my Blue Ox tow bar on the bottom receiver and it allows me to put my two bike rack on the top hitch. And this piece you see here just keeps the bike rack from wobbling. Now I do have my 10 inch drop receiver locked in uh, to the rigs receiver so that it can't be taken off. Um, and then I have my tow bar locked in as well. We get a lot of questions about the tow vehicle that we have. We have a 2019 Jeep Cherokee Trailhawk. The one thing that I recommend before you purchase a tow vehicle is get into whatever it is you're looking at, find the owner's manual, make sure that it says it can be flat towed and that is with four tires on the ground. Do not trust the word of the salesperson or somebody else. Don't even trust our word that this can be flat towed. Get in, check the manual, make sure you can. We've heard from subscribers that trusted the salesperson, bought the vehicle, went to get it set up to tow, only to find out it can't be flat towed. So you've got to double check that. There's a, there's a guide out there that will help you find a towed. It's called a dinghy, dinghy tow guide, I think. Um, I'll have Stacy see if she can link that below as well. Now let's talk about staying connected and our Wi-Fi. We're working on that. We'll get back with you. <laughs> that's all we got for that right now. <laughs> all right, guys, that's it for our questions. We are going to continue to expand our FAQ page on our website. So anytime we have some questions that we keep recurring and we get them over and over, we will add it onto that website. Thanks so much for hanging out with us today. Don't forget, you can find us on our website. You can find us mainly at our village on social media, but also Instagram and Facebook. Yeah, this has been great. We love the questions. Uh, we just get a lot of them and it's hard to answer them one at a time or you know onesies twosies so the faqs that stacy put together hopefully will work for us in the future yeah and work for you guys as well yeah. all right guys thanks so much for hanging out with us today make sure you hit that subscribe button give us a thumbs up and hit the notification bell over there and hopefully we will see you on, on the, the road, road.